He has uh, written, produced, and is reporting the correspondent of this latest documentary out of the Frontline series. They really are about 100%. I'm trying to think. I was thinking this last night. Have I ever watched a Frontline that wasn't, like, really, really good? Uh, No, they're all incredible. And this one is so right for this moment in our economic history and the history of this country. It's called Easy Money. How about a welcome for James Jacoby, everybody? Hey. Wow. What a task. Uh, it This uh, documentary takes you through the world of the Fed and how they deal with various issues confronting the economy, things that we read about and talk about all the time. Uh, inflation, money supply, stock market, and all the rest. It seems like a delicate balancing act. And then you get all of the key figures in this decision-making process in your documentary. I'm, I'm speaking enthusiastically because I really was impressed. Uh, take us through some of the high points of this, if you would, please, James Jacoby. Well, um, first of all, great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you're a fan of Frontline and a gr- I'm glad you're a fan of this film, um, Age of Easy Money. So um, I'd say, listen, right now is a weird high, high point highlight. It's uh, it's a precarious moment. Uh, we, we've seen, you know, two big bank failures. Today's news that a huge European bank is, is, is there's a seemingly a loss of confidence there. And what we're seeing right now is this, very precarious moment where the where, where the the financial world and the economy are catching up with the fact that this easy money policy that the Fed has been running for 14 years is now over. They've they've pulled away the punch bowl, and uh, and we'll see what happens as a result of that. So I mean it's it's I, I I mean I'm telling you something that's very current because it's top of mind for me, and it's sort of a bizarre thing to have worked on this thing for two years and then literally three days before we go to air with it. (laughs) Um, I, you know, worrying about whether anyone's going to want to watch or whether it's going to be relevant to whatever is in the news, because the news cycles crazy, as we all know. Well, you know, we, we, we literally start seeing the effects of what we've been reporting on for two years. Yeah. As I was saying, you couldn't drop at a better moment. And, and and the thing that I, you know, it's funny how one crisis bumps out of uh, the other crises in your mind. So this banking situation mm. is the thing that was bumping out the beginnings you even predate covid it's great your documentary goes back be- before that and you kind of see the run up and we talked a lot on this show about what was happening with all the money that was injected into the economy and all the breaks that that uh, corporations were getting in the buybacks i mean that we weren't alone i mean they were the buybacks were being talked about by many but you see the kind of the one-dimensional character that the economy has you also see the inevitability of it being one-dimensional that's what i thought your your documentary really pointed up yeah i mean what's what's interesting what we really aim to do here and it was pretty ambitious was to just kind of say look I, i think that it's 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 indisputable that the great financial crisis and what we went through in 08 was a a sea change for this country politically and economically and what we've we we really this latest chapter, which you know was end of you know was the Obama years into the Trump years and now the Biden years. Um, this this is we wanted to kind of look at this as an era that was almost defined by this policy coming out of the ashes of what what came out of the ashes of the Great Financial Crisis. And when you look at that, one of the big things that you just can't it's glaringly obvious is what the federal reserve has been doing they they brought interest rates down to zero during the 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 financial crisis they started with all sorts of experimental policies like quantitative easing to try to keep interest rates low and we've really been running the economy on easy money for the past 14 years or so and we're now seeing the result of what happens when you when you pull the when you pull back on that and you've got an entire global economy essentially that's been addicted to it Right. And the success of the stock market, and you talk about this uh, in your documentary, and then you confront, as I say, those at the Federal Reserve in different places around the country about this, it seems tied to uh, the stock market. The stock market is tied to so much happiness and and a perception of the economy. And obviously, the retirement funds and all the rest that are tied up in that market. But if you respond only to the stock market, then you as the Fed aren't doing the job that the Fed is really supposed to do. Absolutely. And and we do. I mean, you you asked about highlights. And I, I certainly think, you know, Neil Kashkari, I, I give him a he lot. He was of terrific. 
Yeah, well, he's so the, on, he was so honest with you, I thought. I thought so, too. And, I, you know, even more so, you know, look, I tried to get a lot of people from the Fed, sitting people to talk to me, to, to sit down for interviews, whether it was the, the chairman, Jay Powell, or um, vice chair, or anyone from the Federal Reserve Board, or other presidents of the regional banks. The only one to agree to sit down for an on-camera interview is Neil Kashkari, and so I give him a lot of credit for that. And, and to exp- tell everybody, remind everybody who Neil Kashkari is, please. He's the, he's the president of the Minneapolis Fed, which is one of the 12 regional banks at the Fed, and he's um, you know, he's a uh, he's he's an interesting guy and 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 very bright, very staunch de- defender of what the Fed's been doing um, and really not afraid of sitting down for uh, two interviews for this film uh, over the course of reporting this thing um, to really answer the tough questions. And I think he does a very good job, robust defense of what they've been doing. And I really think it gives viewers a, a solid idea as to what their intentions were. But as you mentioned, the stock market going up for, for all these years, now we're seeing a lot of turbulence there as they pull away the punch bowl again. Um, but the, the Fed was, uh, you, know, he, he, you know, he takes on the challenges that I give him about whether the Fed was really working to make the stock market go up and uh, a market that was addicted to its easy money. Does, I must tell you at the, at the you know, you bring everything to this, magnificent conclusion this by the way quite the project so i give you you know mad respect for pulling this all together you. uh you know all, it's it's you have to chronicle a lot of events then you have to try to get a hold of the people who are associated with these events i mean it's like it's the cork board true crime complication uh, on top of complication right yeah and and you do it effectively and so at the end there's this culmination of it like what well where are we what can we expect and you talk to you know you talk to billionaires and you talk to you know major uh, uh major managers of tremendous amounts of money those who've yeah. succeeded immensely yeah. and you realize that the fed which is one of the big focuses of what you're talking about of course is caught sort of in in a weird way it, it left me thinking oh no they really are caught yeah they're in a bind. They're in a terrible, terrible bind. I mean, think about it right now, right? We've got an inflation problem in this country. It hurts everybody. It especially hurts people, at, you know, in the middle and lower, um, you know, strata of the the economic ladder. And it's much more painful than than I think a lot of people give it credit for right now. Um, it's obviously come down a bit. It's continuing to come down, but it's still much, much higher than where the Fed would want it or where any of us is comfortable with it. So the Fed's had to raise interest rates to try to get that under control. But we can see the bind they're in. They've raised interest rates dramatically over the past year or so. And now we're seeing stress in the banking system all of a sudden. All of the things that the banks have been doing and buying and all these securities that they own on their balance sheets that were calibrated for zero interest rates now have to be recalibrated for higher rates and those values of those things plummet. And so we're, we're, we're in this very precarious situation, again, where the Fed is caught because it's trying to raise rates to get inflation down. That's a national prerogative. And it is the Fed's pr- main mandate. And at the same time, um, it's, it's, you know, there's potential financial stability problems with what it's doing. So the irony in some ways, and I think this comes across in the film, I hope it does, is that they sort of painted themselves into this corner. They got themselves into this bind because the, the, the economy has become so addicted to what they were doing for so long. And of course, exiting from that paradigm is going to be difficult. Yeah, you talk about the sugar high that the stock market was on with the rates being so low and how that clearly just jetted everything up. And you also touched on, and this is what I talk about when the time passes and you forget, you talk about that even Janet Yellen as different, uh, you know, characters begin to take control of the situation, the Fed, she was having to say, even though she was trying to, you know, uh, pull pull back this policy of easy money, uh, she was having to say, I don't expect we're going to have a... uh, a raising of rates over the next quarter or whatever her, her comments were. In other words, she had to almost give the markets, again, the markets, some kind of indication that the Fed wasn't going to be aggressive in raising rates. She had to at least say it. She did. 
She did. I mean, th there's been episode after episode that we chronicle in this film where the Fed's trying to take take away a little bit of these policies and the markets throw it and it's called a tantrum, a taper tantrum. Um, we talk about it in, I think, 2013. Then it happens again a little bit later during the Trump administration. Trump berates Fed, Fed Chair Powell at the time saying, you know, you're really screwing up our economic gains here by trying to raise interest rates a little bit to try to normalize things a little bit. But again, the markets threw a tantrum, Trump threw a tantrum. It was a very, um, it's been, and, and the irony is that Jerome Powell, who's been at the Fed quite a while now and has been chair for about seven or so years, he, he took on that position appointed by Trump saying he really wanted to pull back on easy money as well. He thought it was time. And so, um, now he's doing it because inflation reared its head. Uh, but again, back to your point, they're in a big bind. Yeah. I, I, at yeah. the end of it, you wonder what the right moves are. You know, there's no bad guy here. No. There is, is, as you say, this market, the stock market and the worldwide market. You point to that as well. Yeah. That is addicted to the, you know, to the, to the easy money, to the, 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 they're essentially giving money away. Yeah, and then the the cranking of the rates and how that has put a shock into the system. And now that reverberation extends into the banking system. Yeah. I mean, it's, and you kind of watch it unfold in the second hour because we start the second hour of the film in, in, with COVID. And, you know, as we, we, we all, you know, we've spent so much time thinking about COVID and the virus and that type of, those stories have been, you know, things that we've, we've focused so much on, but I felt like not enough people realized what what was going on economically. You know, we did you know we did the CARES Act. We the the, the we did that was two point two trillion dollars of, of of federal assistance, very much needed um, federal assistance to get us over the you know through the pandemic. But but the, you the, also talk about what happens with a lot of that money. People were going, hey, yeah. I want the fast money also. Well, the thing was, was that the Fed was doing extraordinary things to try to keep the economy going and the financial system afloat during the pandemic. They kept that those emergency measures in place for a couple of years after the pandemic hit. And uh, so you had a tremendous stimulus from the federal government to help, you know, Main Street and also corporations and uh, a lot of people get through it. You had that during Trump. Then Biden comes in, he does his stimulus. In the meantime, the Fed's doing its stimulus. And all this money coming out into the system combined with supply shocks from the pandemic, which we all know about, you know, the scarcity of certain things and supply chain problems. And all that combines to create this inflation that they didn't foresee. And they let get way too high. And... Uh, and you know, didn't really pull back for a very long time. So I do ask Neil Kashkari, the Minneapolis um, president of the the Fed, there, um, you know, did you run it too hot for too long? And he basically did say, yeah. And in hindsight, knowing what I know now, we should have tightened things sooner. And, things you'll uh, ne that's something you'll never hear from somebody in that position. Typically, I gave him mad, you know, respect for that. Also, I was frankly surprised that he he said it. Um, I, I I I really was. I. I it's very rare, rare, as you're saying, to hear that level of candor about it um, and to essentially admit he, admit he was wrong. I mean, he he thought one thing. It's not to blame him. He just, they thought one thing. It was crisis time. They thought inflation was transitory, is what they called it. Didn't turn out to be. Um, how would they know? But the fact is, they they did run it too hot, too long. <laughs> Yeah. So and, we're, and we're left with the consequences now. You also see the way that benefits are reaped immediately just in our last couple of minutes here james jacoby uh again the correspondent writer producer of this frontline documentary it's terrific uh you'll you'll love it it's it's riveting i mean you're just it, it's it's great man and Thank one you. of the things you do is you talk to this uh repeatedly you talk to a wall street journal guy i think you had a couple of people from the wall street journal on but one of them was really i thought again very uh, unvarnished in not giving you some sort of institutional answer about the market he talked about the way corporations are really looking to cash in quickly on this kind of they're they're not there to take care of the public to take care of workers there's no sense of of uh social responsibility or to be good corporate citizens they're there to serve their bottom line and their stock price yes so when you combine those instincts you know in corporate america 
with an easy money policy, which essentially enabled corporate America to issue huge amounts of debt for, for take on huge amounts of debt for, for very cheap. Why, why wouldn't you, if you can take that borrowed money and use it in, in a lot of cases to buy back your own share and send your share price up? Sure. I mean, it's, it, you, you think about it, you know, it, it's, there's, it's perverse in a lot of ways. I mean, it, you know, Neil Kashkari says, listen, and this is true. A lot of companies didn't see opportunities for growth and they thought that that was a wise allocation of their own resources. So, so be it. But at the same time, you know, that didn't, that money wasn't being put into raises. It wasn't being put into hiring more people necessarily, or new plants and equipment or infrastructure. It was, it was unfortunately, I think one of the themes of this film and I hope it comes through to you, is that uh, there were some squandered opportunities here. It's the cheapest money in human history. The country didn't invest much. Um, corporate America didn't invest much. It, it, was, it wasn't used for great purposes. You had a, a, one of your experts or one of those involved again in this, and you talked to all these key figures, was, made just that point, that it was, uh, you know, here was your chance to really do infrastructure for nothing. I mean, literally, they're giving you the money for nothing. You don't yeah. do infrastructure. Instead, you know, it's just everybody looking to, you know, put it into their pockets. And, you know, those CEOs, their compensation is linked to the stock price. So, of course, it's like, uh, give me the shortest distance between here and that compensation. Yeah, well, as Sheila Baer puts it, she's remarkable. She's the former head of the FDIC, which is is the, is the, that and the Fed are the agencies in the news right now, because what are they going to do if other banks collapse? But she ran the, she was the top banking regulator and she puts it really well. I mean, as she says, it's really hard for a company to hire people. It's really hard to build a new plant and come up with a new thing. It's really easy to issue some debt, use that money, buy back your own stock, boost your share price and pay yourself handsome bonuses. So unfortunately, that's, uh, that's where we are. <laughs> Well, I also give you credit for not using the uh, Will Lyman, the narrator who normally does all the frontline stuff. That I'm usually uh, I'm I know him because I audition against him on a lot of stuff. Ah. He is always going to beat me out because he's better than I am. But he does that, uh, you know. The tonight on Frontline, reporter James Jacoby inside the U.S. economic system. Right? Isn't he? Isn't that him? Wow, yeah. wow. Mark, yeah. that was that's good. That was yeah. very. I mean. Well, well done. Uh, I, yeah, Will. Uh, Will's it's too awesome. expensive for this one. Is that what happened, James? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love really, that you narrated it yourself. I, I, like I narrated that. it, and it's really funny because I, I just I, I peaked on YouTube earlier because the, the the film is up on YouTube right now, um, streaming there, and um, I look at the comments, which you know you should never do. And oh no! Was like I really like the regular narrator. They should go back to that guy. <laughs> you know. And I'm like, all right, I can take it. But, it, you yeah. know, I, it, right. it made more sense for this front line for me to do it because it was kind of my journey through this story. So, well, yeah. I also will tell you this just and I'm a narrator myself. So as you could tell, so I uh, yeah, say this got a voice. I mean, you've got it like, yeah, thank it. you. But I, I, I think one of the great things is that you didn't you read it like it was conversational. You read it like you're telling me, you know, what you did, who these people are, whatever. I thought it was really good. So uh, you. oftentimes you can get in that booth and you kind of you know, you tighten up, but you yeah, didn't do that. Well, it was really good. It took a few takes. Okay. <laughs> but I appreciate, well, check it out. I appreciate you know, the compliment. <laughs> uh, Age of Easy Money, it's called. It's on Frontline. You can find it on uh, in, a, in a number of places. Of course, on PBS Passport, on PB, wherever your PBS station is, KCET. Um, uh, what are the PBS stations, Kim, the various, whether well, San Francisco, it's KQED, and K Los Angeles, KCET. Yeah. Uh, that's where most of our audience is on the West Coast in Got those, those two or, cities. Or just PBS.org or PBS.org slash Frontline. Or guess what? On, on, on YouTube. Not that I necessarily want to give them the business, but that's, that's there, there you go. They, um, it's, it's up on streaming on YouTube right now, too. That's great. I mean, such an important story and so well done. So uh, appreciate it. Thank, uh, you, thank so you. Yes. Thank you. James Jacoby tonight on Frontline. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, pal. Nice job. And I look forward to your next uh, piece of work because you're really thank a you. talented guy. Thank you really you. appreciate thank it. You. James Jacoby, everybody. Bravo. Hi, it's Mark. And I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped. And please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.